Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Financing Philadelphia's Future. I'm Vanessa Lowe, your host, and we're going to jump right in. Today is a conversation with two of our leaders from the Philadelphia Public Banking Coalition, and it's all about their latest initiative. Um, so we're excited to jump right in. We're going to have Peter Winslow and Stan Shapiro. Um, again, welcome, everyone. Settle yourselves in. Um, the best way to look at this is the speaker view. Um, and please put questions into the chat. Um, and uh, we have, I think, at least Susan, who's going to be monitoring our chat today. All right. Thanks so much. Let's get started. Peter, please introduce yourself. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. I'm Peter Winslow, a member of the Philadelphia Public Banking Coalition and a uh, member of the board of the uh, Public Banking Institute. I'm Stan. I'm Stan Shapiro, Vice Chair of Philly Neighborhood Networks, former Chief Staff Attorney, Philadelphia City Council, a long time ago. All right. Uh, thank you so much for being here and for having this one-to-one uh, -one conversation about the latest proposal. You all have submitted something to city council. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all submitted something, uh, a proposal about using portion of the city pension fund to support initiatives in the city of Philadelphia that will support the citizens. So let's start with what is the proposal? Peter, let's let you start that one. Oh, thanks, Vanessa. The proposal at the simplest is simply that we're asking the city pension fund to invest some of its funds in local projects that will help people in Philadelphia rather than people elsewhere. Um, most of the, the pension fund is invested in other uh, things that are not specifically designated for the, Phil for the city of Philadelphia and for people in Philadelphia. Uh, we're looking for local economically targeted investments, which are investments that are specific to Philadelphia. That's the essence of the, of the proposal. The specifics of the proposal is that we're asking that a policy be adopted to target 2% of the, of the pension fund, which amounts to around $168 million for this purpose, for local economically targeted investments, which in the, the jargon world we call ETIs. Okay, great. Thank you. And Stan, why don't you start talking about why are y'all making this proposal? Well, um, it's really common sense. There is an $8 billion fund that the city administers through the pension board, and it has impacts when it's invested. If, it, if it's invested in fossil fuel companies, that means that they can drill some more. If it's invested in, um, in luxury housing, that means that more people, rich people can buy condominiums. Um, it ought to be invested in things that regular people need, particularly in Philadelphia, where we have a tremendous inequity um, in every economic measure between um, white folks and people of color. And, um, Redlining is alive and well. It never went away. This is the best way to counter redlining, to have assets under the control of the city and an advisory committee of stakeholders uh, that they can directly invest rather than try to pressure big banks to do it and, try and get reports and do regula regulations and all kinds of monitoring but you never for sure really know what they're doing. If we have a fund that's under our control, we can use that money in the way that we intend to have it used. And also I uh, may add that the particular kinds of, of targeted, economically uh, targeted investments that we have in mind are the ones that were identified in the ordinance to establish the Philadelphia Public Financial Authority. Uh, which are, there are nine areas, but the three that deal with development are uh, affordable housing, cooperatives, and minority-owned small businesses. And that's where we would suggest that the pension fund uh, concentrate initially. Okay, sounds good. 
And um, are these economically targeted initiatives effective elsewhere? Are there people doing this? Yes, it's yes. being done elsewhere. Uh, around the world, uh, it's being done. You know, when you get you, you present an idea like this to folks, they, they say, that's a great idea. You know, um, how come we haven't, it's not already being done. How come it's, you know, how come it's not there? And the answer is that we actually, uh, it is being done in other places. And um, uh, Stan, why don't you uh, talk about what they're doing in New York, where they have the same 2% target. Well, I just put um, a link to the New York City program in the, in the chat. Um, they uh, have created a program uh, that's been around for about 30 years now. That's a long and, time. And um, uh, if you check that link, you'll see that they have invested more than $388 million in multifamily housing, $762 million in single family housing, a total of almost 50,000 units, uh, spending over a billion dollars, investing over a billion dollars in the pension fund. Um, it is um, a very effective program. Uh, and there are many others actually around the country. I'm gonna put a link in uh, that um, demonstrates the effectiveness of this program in at least five other jurisdictions. Uh, it shows that they not only produce benefits to the citizens of these jurisdictions, but they actually perform better. Economically targeted investments actually perform better than uh, conventional investments. So and, and also, I'm also uh, putting that, that link in. Economically Thank targeted you. investments, is, that's the business. That's the business model of the World Bank. That's the business model of regional development uh, uh, agencies. Uh, so this is a, a concept that is in in uh, in use around the world. Right. And again, mm -hmm. it's a concept that is in use in pension funds. Um, so and people are still getting their pension. And in fact, yeah, I mean, the way you're describing it, it's they're getting an extra benefit beyond their pension, which is, oh, I, they, the investments are staying in my city. Maybe I'm mm -hmm. buying one of those, you know, affordable houses or something. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it makes Absolutely. a lot of sense. What is happening with the proposal now? What's been the response? Um, we have uh, definitely attracted interest by members of, of council and their staffs, some of whom are with us right now and want to give a shout out to them. We really appreciate their being here. Um, and um, so a partnership is developing, which we think uh, is going to be very powerful. We are going to need there's no doubt that if you're disrupting the status quo, which this will do, no matter how deserved it is to disrupt that status quo, that there will be a lot of opposition just because you're changing things. So um, we're going to uh, be in touch with everybody who's here and others who are interested in ways that you can express your support for this idea. It is going to need a lot of um, people power to make this happen. But, but the good news is there are definitely members of council who see the benefit of this and um, we expect that we're gonna be having a productive relationship with them. And Vanessa, we presented this proposal in the form of a concept paper to uh, both the city pension fund and to the Parker uh, transition team back in December. Um, and the, the city pension fund um, has uh, thanked us and uh, taken it under advisement, and uh, they are looking at the proposal, um, and we're hoping that we will be able to engage with them in a, a, a collaborative discussion and exploration of uh, all aspects of this. Uh, you know, we want this to be looked at very thoroughly. This is not something that we we want them to do without full deliberation and consideration of all the factors that apply. Gotcha. Um, it's interesting because we're in a state of lots of new city council people, so lots of learning. Um, but uh, good for you all for, you know, trying to get this in there. So sounds good. Um, let's dig in a little bit more. You've mentioned some of the specifics, but what is the specific ask? Let's break that down a little bit. How much are we talking about? 
what's the process? Well, the first, first step in the specific ask is that the, the city pension fund establish an asset class for local economically targeted investments. Uh, right now, they have asset classes for global equities, global real estate, but nothing that's targeted for local uh, projects, local economically targeted investments. And that's what we're really asking them to do is to uh, create an asset class. They can do that at any stated meeting of the investment committee of the city pension fund or at an annual meeting. So it's not that hard for them to set up the asset class. Once they have the asset class, they should set a target, which would be a policy uh, that is set by the pension board itself. And uh, then it's a question of being able to have programs in place that will accomplish that and meet their target. Got it. All right. Where will the pension fund find suitable ETI investment vehicles? Well, there are a number of programs in the city right now that are formulated to help people who can't otherwise get financing. Um, the, there are a number of quasi-public agencies which have found ways to um, reduce the carrying cost for various loans and investments. Uh, we think that um, um, this, uh, this initiative can provide more of that capital and even lower rates in some cases because the pension fund is not required only to charge um, high rates so that each investment is not required to get a return, which is a super high return. If there are other benefits to the uh, pension beneficiaries apart from return, uh, that has been found to be a legitimate investment. And uh, we're expecting that with a fund of $168 million, 2% of the, of the pension fund, uh, that we can supplement uh, many of the other programs that are out there. Yeah, uh, partners would include the Accelerator Fund, um, uh, the Philadelphia Green Capital Corporation, um, the, uh, the Philadelphia Housing Development uh, uh, Corporation. Uh, you know, Mayor Parker was a, very much a supporter of um, uh, uh, repair, re restore, rebuild. And uh, that has, uh, you know, some funds um, it does not have a very high return, but uh, that's the kind of program that could be assisted by having a secondary market where once the, there's been an origination of a loan, for example, a mortgage portfolio that's held by a, a credit union or, or a minority depository institution, that uh, there would be a, a way of packaging those loans in a way that they could become uh, the uh, the investment of the pension fund, and in that fashion, uh, provide liquidity for the other financial institutions in the city. Okay. Do you have a sense of so this new category of asset that you're recommending? Do you have a sense of what would be the expected return, or is that for them to decide later? We think that th that we should be looking for. Uh, not a, a necessarily market rate of return as as the standard, but the the norm for the pension fund overall, so that the pension fund would remain as solid for the for the beneficiaries of the fund uh, as it currently is. Uh, we think that in fact we can improve the performance of the, the pension fund in terms of its its risk and reward, and that uh, it should be possible to package these investments in a way that is uh, cost effective and uh, with less transaction cost than is done by the investment bankers. But you know, the investment bankers um, can package these kinds of, of, of properties into vehicles suitable for the pension fund. We're specifically looking to tailor investment vehicles that are exactly what the pension fund is looking for. So it wouldn't be going out into the marketplace and finding uh, investments that uh, the you know, pension fund would want to invest in, but having those in investments 
specifically designed for the pension fund. This is an example uh, or a precedent that was set in California uh, where uh, uh, CalPERS, the California uh, Public Employees Retirement System, uh, uh, where the government set up an agency by executive order to go and find local investments for the pension fund in exactly this way. That's the kind of model that we think would apply here. Gotcha, it should gotcha. be noted, it, it would be worth noting that um, the New York City Controller did a study of uh, the returns that their fund generated from traditional investments. And they found that over a period of 10 or 20 years, I'm not sure of the exact period of time, um, the pension fund earned something like 1% from those investments after deducting the ridiculous fees that Wall Street charges for the privilege of um, providing them with bad advice on uh, what kinds of investments to make. Um, so um, we, we really have very little to fear from looking at other ways of earning a return. There you and go. that's one of, the, one of the things that we think uh, there could be a role for the uh, Philadelphia Public Financial Authority to uh, serve an imbe- investment banking function and to package investments suitable for the pension fund uh, if the, you know, if other sources aren't available or actually we think that it can do it uh, with less transaction cost. Gotcha. Um, so could these ETIs also be appropriate for institutions like endowments, for example, in addition to the city pension fund? Absolutely. Um, we think that the University of Pennsylvania Endowment Fund, I'm a Penn graduate, I'd love to see uh, Penn uh, invest in uh, local projects that would benefit the community. Uh, the same thing is true of of our uh, foundations, like the William Penn Fund and other organizations such as that, uh, and, and others. Uh, I might note uh, uh, Tom Skouros, who was our guest last month, um, can't be here uh, today, uh, but I spoke with him, and he is going to be at a meeting in New York on Friday uh, with labor uh, folks, la- labor pension uh, personnel, looking at the the same kinds of of uh, proposals, the same kinds of projects that we're proposing for the Philadelphia uh, Public Pension Fund. Yeah. So for those of you, some questions in the chat. Maybe we ought to go to a few of those. Okay. Susan. Yeah, there's a number number of questions in there. And let me just invite folks to stay on after um, uh, at 430 for an informal if your question doesn't get uh, answered here in this half hour. Um, uh, Sheila wonders about the fact that the pension fund is not fully funded, that it's only funded at 60%. And what what uh, might that have an effect on uh, whether the folks are willing to go with this kind of um, proposal? Well, the fund is actually improved its um, uh, uh, performance with respect to the unfunded liability. It was under 50% um, at the time of the uh, 2008 crash. So it's gotten up to 60%. Um, but the uh, the the, the super concern about funded uh, portions of the pension fund are probably uh, beyond what the actual needs are because ultimately the city itself and the state are responsible for paying pension obligations. It does not have to come entirely from the fund. And the city and state are contributing right now. We're, we're thinking that it's going to be easier for the city and state to contribute if we develop the economy um, that generates the taxes that the city and state contribute. So we we actually think that this is a proposal that does good by providing direct benefits and then also by providing the indirect but very important benefit of generating income that the fund can use for pensioners. Yeah, I also think it's worth pointing out that um, that a lot of the improvement in the performance and the, the funding uh, of, the, of the city pension fund 
uh, has happened under the watch of our finance director, Rob Duval, that um, th- that he has been very good at incrementally improving the the um, the status and the, and the security of the pension fund. Uh, but as Stan says, uh, that's a separate issue from the one that we're talking about. Our, a good part, just, just very briefly, just you know, very briefly, a good part of if not all of the the increase in the funded portion of the fund comes from the fact that there were new labor contracts which require workers to pay more into the fund um, and and reduce benefits and and have converted uh, the defined benefit plan, which most workers in in the city have to a defined benefit plan, which doesn't even actually guarantee a return. So um, it's not that the fund has been managed so well that uh, its unfunded liability has gone down. It's been other things, mostly. Yeah, and for those of you who didn't see last month's episode, it is available on the website with Tom Seguros. He made some really good points in answer to this question that we just got from Susan. Susan, let's get another question from you before we go back uh, to the guys. Okay, let's see. There's some concerns about administrative costs. Uh, this is from Elaine. Uh, uh, um, would there be government administrative costs? Uh... All right, and I think that falls under the question of how will the proposal affect the beneficiaries of the pension fund? This is kind of what we're hearing now coming, uh, those kind of questions. So talk about that a little bit, guys. Yeah. Well, there are, tremendous, there are tremendous fees that are being charged by the current Wall Street managers of the fund. We don't right. really know what they are, the fund is not very transparent. There's a lot of information that hopefully we can get we can get from them as we vet this proposal more. But um, it's it's hard to imagine that the administrative costs for the kind of program we're talking about, where there are many experts out there in the city who know about these kinds of investments, and we could probably retain one or more of them to manage this portion of the fund at very little, if any extra cost um, to what's being charged now. But those think, are, those are issues we're going to have to, we're going to have to investigate. I think if anybody's really interested in that issue, they should look at what's gone on with the Pennsylvania pension funds and paying consultants mm-hmm. and returns and been a whole multi-year scandal of things versus just sticking it in a hedge fund and, and the values. But the, what this does, the, the real safety in, in this kind of lending is that we know who the folks are. Uh, whereas if you're investing in a, you know, uh, a sweatshop in China, you don't. And so the, that's really what the underlying safety is. And the other underlying safety is you can not, rely not only on, depending on what you're lending on, not only on the return of the loan, but you could do things like, you're saying talk about the, making the economy work better. Well, you could capture that money uh, and and dedicate just the same way we abate taxes. We could collect the taxes in that project or in that neighborhood and use that as a secondary insurance to those to those funds or to goose up the return of those funds. There uh, there are all kinds of ways you can you can you know the city if it does energy projects that relate to people who they're either paying for or their own stuff, for example, they can have savings on their energy bill that, again, is not part of the loan per se. It's not reflected in the interest rate, but there's a savings that take place elsewhere in in the uh, great city revenue stream that that money can be recaptured and and returned into into securing the pension loan in in, in some way. So there's a bunch of different other economies to, to capture that Thank makes you, Dan. It a lot safer, and also, you know what who, who these folks are, so that also makes it safer. Thank you, Dan. With just about five minutes left, Susan, let's go back to you and see if you have some more questions. Uh, just just to note that Jesse uh, suggests that childcare would be um, a good uh, investment. Always uh, a good investment in childcare. Yes. Any others? No. I think we pretty much got it. What's here? Uh, Okay, so let's say, talk to us about next steps, guys. Where are you now in the process and what are the next steps? Well, we're well, hoping to, uh, to 
enter into an exploratory conversation with folks at the uh, at the city pension fund and in the administration um, so that we can move uh, the idea forward and do the research uh, and and make sure that people are comfortable with this idea to to um, explore the, the the things that we don't necessarily know right now uh, identify uh, problem areas or potential problem areas as Dan was pointing out there are many special advantages that we can have uh, in a local investment program that do not exist for uh, some of the other projects, uh, and also to do an investigation of just how much the uh, the impact, the overall impact for Philadelphia will be uh, from this kind of a, of a project in terms of increased jobs and uh, economic activity. Um, you know, the, the we're looking for leadership and uh, we're, we're looking for uh, the the leadership of our uh, our city pension fund uh, to show the way for other labor unions and and others uh, that would also uh, be suitable for investment in local economically targeted uh, projects uh, and and uh, to bring some of our money home from being invested around the world to be invested where it'll do Philadelphia some good. Absolutely. I'd like to, I, I want to very quickly say that in terms of getting this done, there are three ways. One uh, would be if the pension board, which is made up of four administration representatives, four labor representatives and the city controller, they can decide on their own that they want to create a program like this or city council can mandate it by ordinance. So, um, we, we could work on uh, developing language which would go into the city code to mandate that that's, that's legal. It's been done before. Um, and then the third is if the, if the mayor really gets behind this, she has many, many ways of exerting influence. So those, okay. are, those are the three targets that we will be going after. And the controller. The okay. On the board too. Mm -hmm. So we seem to have a lot of supporters or at least interested parties on this uh, Zoom today. Are you asking them to reach out, do anything, um, make any calls yet, or we're not quite there? I think we're not quite there. We will be soon, okay. but um, okay. we're still working out uh, the details of our strategy. For those of you who didn't see, I hope we can put the uh, link to the Inquirer article um, by our two esteemed guests today. Uh, Stan and Peter, that was in, was it about a week and a half ago? Uh, mm -hmm. Let's try to put that link in. Hopefully a lot of you saw that article and we'll try to get more in to start. Uh, and it was all about the initiative. Um, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, how perfect. Love letter, love letter to uh, the city pensioners. All right, Susan, I'm gonna go back to you to see if you have any final questions. There's one more, a question from Alexandra, wondering about uh, unions and union involvement. Have we in reached out to the unions? Well, the, there are, are the union representatives um, for or the city workers, which includes uh, the Fraternal Order of Police and the firefighters uh, and uh, the, you know, all the other city workers. Um, we have not independently gone and spoken to people in in those unions because um, out of deference and respect for the their representatives on the pension board, uh, we're hoping that as this becomes a, a public discussion, that more people from the unions or people who are beneficiaries of the pension fund will uh, participate in the discussion uh, with us and will back this proposal because it's to their benefit. Um, as well as the benefit of everybody else in Philadelphia. Thank you, thank you both. So here's the thing: we're at the we're at the end of the time for our standard half hour for financing Philadelphia's future, but we're leaving it open. We're going to turn off the recording, but we're leaving it open because we have so many people here who I think want to discuss this a little bit more, maybe without a recording on. So you're welcome to stay. Those of you who need to leave, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next month.